Consciousness, the final frontier. These are the voyages into the universe universe between your ears. ears. Our mission, to explore collective wisdom, seek out amazing secrets, and spread the message of personal potential. All right, welcome everybody to this episode of The Universe Between Your Ears. I'm Tim Starr, your host with my co-host, Gabi Mushayev. Gabi, say hello. Hello. Hello to everyone. And uh, today's guest is a friend of mine, Morgan Wonderly, who is the only person I have ever heard of, I think, that does what she does. Um, So let me tell you a little bit about Morgan, and then we'll jump into a, a juicy conversation here. Morgan is a femininity mentor to women. She's a pioneer in the field of femininity femininity from the perspective of men. Morgan has studied men for over a decade and spent thousands of hours listening to men to learn what they find feminine in women. She works with women who are tired of operating from masculinity and want to reconnect with their feminine essence so that they can attract a masculine man. So, Morgan, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to finally get you live and in person here. Yeah. Um, So there's a lot to talk about um, because what I just read doesn't address a big piece of what you you also work with women on, and that's like being feminine in the the corporate world, right? Well, how how they can do that. In general, not necessarily corporate, but it includes corporate, just dressing in a feminine way that resonates with their their, uh, core being. Right. Okay. And so this show is about, you know, it's called The Universe Between Your Ears. So it's about the things, the ideas and and the, the... the beliefs that people have and things, all that's between your ears and what we believe and, and the, the things that we think about and act on, um, it all starts here. And so we, this is where we're going to start with <laughs> the, the focus of what we talk about basically is how, how we're, we're, people can move their lives forward and, you know, live better lives and that kind of thing. So um, with that in mind, maybe, maybe we start the conversation by asking about, I love this idea um, of, of finding out what's, what it means to be feminine by asking men. And you mm-hmm. asked, you asked, you spent a long time doing this, right? You asked a lot of guys. It's over 10 years, about 11 years. Wow, okay. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. What was that process like? Well, um, I had a couple of maybe two or three different men in particular who offered to help me um, that were very insightful. They were very high quality men who uh, had already done a lot of thinking about this for many years and they shared their insights. And then I went from conversations with them to talking to other men just on the street or maybe sitting next to on an airplane or um, meeting at the bank um, to get their opinions or or to say, well, you know, other men have told me this. What do you think? And I was shocked at how many of these men, whether they were 20 or 70 years old, that they would say, wow, that is right on. Amen Mm -hmm. to that. So, um, So I felt like I was on the right track. How many how many men did did you talk to? Do you have any idea? Um, probably three hundred. I'm just guessing. Okay, <laughs> or maybe yeah. three hundred men. Uh, okay, something like that, maybe more. Well, that's a, that's a more valid statistic than you know uh, the ten guys down at the at the office. I talked to all of them. <laughs> you know, um, that must have been fun. To uh, how do you even like? Okay, so how do you identify this man? is a masculine man and so therefore i want to approach them because obviously you don't want to approach a feminine man right for your that's true husband. that is true yeah. yeah it does make a difference yeah i guess so. you, you need to kind of sort of like i guess perceive them as masculine to begin with before you even approach them right 
Yes, and it's usually pretty easy to tell. Yeah. You know, <laughs> on the more on the man, you know, most men, I'd say 80% of men have a masculine core. 80%? So, oh. That's what I, I read and learned. Good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> More, more masculine men is a good thing, absolutely. But then, the, the, you know, the, the polarity, um, I think what fascinated me, uh, and you know what, I am so glad, Tim, that you introduced me to um, Morgan's work, right? Because otherwise I wouldn't have heard, I mean, you know, I don't know, it was mm. a great uh, experience, right? And I, I, I uh, you know, the, the subject resonates with me a lot. It's, uh, I'm taking great interest in that subject. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> what immediately, I guess, and I'm a mathematician by profession, uh, what immediately impressed me is how clearly you define, right, that this book, right, you said, I think in the beginning even, right, you said, this book is not for a woman who considers herself a masculine woman. This yes. is only for, me, for uh, feminine women, right? So Right, women that consider themselves to have a, a feminine core predominantly. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, and so um, maybe then that's for women who are, they know they're feminine, but for some reason their femininity was suppressed or they're confused or maybe they're mm -hmm. socialized into being, into playing more masculine roles. Exactly. So now you're trying to get them to, to, to get them to reclaim their femininity and be themselves. Right. Yes, because there are a lot of women that have been conditioned by our society to be more masculine yeah. and they feel like something doesn't feel right, uh, yeah. this isn't really who I am, and that's why so many women are unhappy mm -hmm. today because they're not in their, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In yeah. operating from their core essence. Which is feminine. I'm looking at you, and you are a very feminine woman. I have. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank As you. a masculine so, man, I immediately drawn to you. So. <laughs> well, thank you. That's a that's a wonderful compliment. <laughs> uh, I, I had a question, and just like that, it went away. Um, I do that to people. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask. Um, so. Morgan, let's say a woman comes to you and says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm resonating with what you've written and, and I, I, but I don't know where to start. I feel like I'm, I'm not representing myself as, you know, the feminine person that I feel that I am. Where do you start with them? Well, one place I start is with their uh, appearance. And so I offer like virtual calls um, mm -hmm. that I can do anywhere in the United States. Uh, for women, you know, we do like a, a Skype or um, FaceTime or Zoom call. And mm -hmm. um, and that way I can actually see them. I can do their, I do their colors uh, to find out what their best colors are, talk to them about, um, you know, what they're currently wearing, look in their closet, to see what they're wearing and maybe why they're bringing out more of their masculine and their feminine because so many women today have wardrobes filled with black and gray mm -hmm. and brown and all the unfeminine colors mm -hmm. and clothes that are you know just not flattering to their figure and so that is one place that I start um, Besides and, having them read my book. Yeah, right, right. And you've got a lot of experience in that also, right? You, you've got a, your cosmetologist and color expert, that stylist thing. So oh, yes. you're not just, yes. you're not just, you've written this book and said, okay, well now I can do makeovers for women too. Because, right. I you know, started so you already know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, hopefully. <laughs> That's right. I made makeovers when I was in junior high school. So. That is my passion, is to um, help women be beautiful. Uh, but after I wrote the book, I realized I wanted to focus more on the feminine image, not just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like a better image, but a better it, feminine, it, feminine image. Mm -hmm. So my focus has kind of changed, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we, we, we appreciate that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Every little bit helps. Um, yeah. So, uh, Tim, um, go ahead. Uh, you know that's a, that that is very interesting because um, 
you know, when this topic came up, right, um, you know, and there was something in the book that was really, um, you know, stayed with me that, uh, you know, the trend, you said the trend, I have it actually, the trend of blurring gender roles is progressively creating a unisex society, causing mass confusion and dissatisfaction in our romantic relationships, right? Yes. And it occurred to me, um, this is referring only, it looks like, to the Western society, right? Um, uh -huh. Coming from a Russian background, I couldn't help thinking that, wow, you know what, um, you know, this trend is not prevalent in, uh, for example, in uh, places outside of Western culture, like in, in, in Russia. And I spoke with many American men who dated Russian women. Yeah. Um, they said that, um, uh, you know, that masculine feminine polarity is very much supported by Russian women. And as a matter of fact, not just supported, defended. So mm -hmm. that's an interesting, um, you know, the cultural component here too. Um, yes, right. that, and that is why so many men are looking yeah. overseas, overseas to yeah. find yeah. wives because they know yeah. that those women mm -hmm. are going to be more feminine and they love their femininity. It's not like they're being forced right. into it. I mean, they, right, they right, really right. cherish their femininity. Well, this is, this in part at least, this is a result of the whole the feminist movement. Right from the yeah. the sixties and, oh and my beyond, where they yeah. were just the pendulum went so far over, you know, they 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 felt like they had to be basically men in order to yeah. to wield some power, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now it's coming you, you, back. They said so. that different does not mean not equal. That's um, right. So That's right. Point. I remember because we're always going to be more powerful exactly. in in our our essence. Uh, mm -hmm. operating from our core essence rather than a different core essence, you know, yeah, pretending no, to be someone else who are never mm -hmm. as effective or as powerful or as happy. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. And, you know, I think that from that confusion, um, you know, what I'm seeing, uh, you know, people who are really not being themselves, that's at the core of the issue, mm -hmm. right? Who are trying to play a role and trying to sell themselves as somebody, as someone they're not. And, you know, a striking example for me, as a matter of fact, was, um, oh, you're going to kill me, Hillary Clinton. <laughs> 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 you know, my wife always tells me, do not make this political, you know. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, if you, if, if, because, you know, the, there are many people who were, um, outspoken about uh, females in the you know in the men's world, right? And how do you succeed? Uh -huh. um, like Sh like Sheryl Sandberg, for example. Remember Sheryl Sandberg? She wrote yes. an amazing book. Uh, I forget. Um, it's, uh, Lean in or something. Well, I think that was Lean in. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Facebook um, uh, chief operating officer. I think she is now. Um, and I remember Hillary. Hillary came out with a new book, you know, after she lost the election, right? Uh, I don't know how she called it, who to blame or why am I not uh, doing it. I don't know. What <laughs> yes, I know. Called? I can't think of the name of it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what happened? She said, what oh, happened? Oh, yes, and yes. The, the title uh -huh. of what happened. Um, yeah. And she was, uh, there was a whole chapter, there was a whole chapter on gender roles and the whole femininity thing. No, oh, I didn't incredible. know. Incredible! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and she really? said that she talked with Sheryl Sandberg. Uh huh. And um, there was this thing that um, a lot of white women did not support Hillary. Oh. And you would think, why didn't they support Hillary, right? Uh huh. And then I'm reading your book, and you said something very interesting. Um, yeah, you said women acted acting masculine is not what elicits respect. In fact, men see it as a weakness. Yes. Right, men, as a sign of cowardice, uh, because because they don't have the courage to be themselves. The fact that women don't need to act masculine to be successful, and then you're saying, right, is supported by the men you've talked with, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you know what? I mean, she started a war, I mean, in Libya, right, Libya. <laughs> Just, oh, uh -huh. to, just to prove that she was good enough, you know, 
uh, as a commander in chief, and so that the world, the tough man, the big boys, you know, accept her as a commander in chief. She was ready to prove that point to start the war. Can you imagine that? So I'm saying what you yes, do is removing that confusion is not only important. It is going to save lives. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How I important agree. your work is, you know. Yes. But does Hillary see herself as a feminine woman? Well, that's you know, just that's, it. I, I yeah. think she's. Uh, yeah. I don't know that she's feminine. Her, at yeah. her core. No. I think yeah. she's more masculine. More masculine. So yeah. She would be one of the twenty yeah. percent that is really, truly more masculine. Yeah. So you know, I I, I wanted to ask what. Yeah. In all of the conversations that you had and, and conversations you've had since writing the book, um, have you had any sort of big revelations mm -hmm. or have, has it all pretty much been what you would have expected? Or I know when, speaking for men, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I started reading it, it was right away, it was like, man, she's hitting this right on the nail. This is exactly how it works. And, um, and it wasn't it wasn't that it was that a great revelation, but it was like, yeah, of course. You know, why is this a question? You know, <laughs> well, uh, almost all of it was a big revelation to me, ah. uh, and so I thought, well, if all this is new to me, it must be new for other women as well, because I just like, for example, I didn't know that. A woman's smile was so important to a man. And uh, so when I, I learned that, I was like, really? Almost like mm -hmm. in disbelief. And But then I would ask other men, and they'd all say, oh, yes, like, isn't that obvious? And <laughs> But it's interesting because I'll ask women, what do you think is one of the most feminine things about us as women to men? And they always guess something different. Mm. Nobody ever, oh I've God. never had one woman say, oh, is it our smile? And then when I say, it's it's our smiles, they're always, they always respond with, really? <laughs> or, you're kidding. Or, well, I never knew that. So it just shows you how different our brains are. Yeah. So what's common sense mm -hmm. to you guys mm -hmm. is we have a whole different way of uh, seeing yeah. things. I can I can see that too well because I I think you know when I have that sort of perception and not perception but uh, um, impression of a lot of women where um, first meeting them maybe nothing much but when they smile mm -hmm. their <laughs> whole face lights up you know and that goes bam and that that imprints. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah, I can see that's that's an important piece. Yeah, for me, I, I've had men tell me that they uh, mm -hmm. can remember a particular woman's smile, like for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. you know, a stranger who smiled at them in a subway or something. You know, it's like really. It's a connection, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. So, yeah, well, masculine. Be careful with masculine men. They. Uh, Receive a smile as a signal. Okay, mm. to approach. You know, <laughs> I'm open for time. right. So, right. yeah, hey, that's an interesting topic. Um, it makes me think of a, a friend I used to have who who would not take a hint, mm. and um, we were kids, and and uh, you know, high school age, and. He met a like a second cousin of mine and wanted to to uh, oh she contacted me wanted to invite him to a, a turnabout dance you know mm -hmm. and uh, he said he said yes no problem and and so you know a few months later she's calling me again going how do I get rid of him he mm -hmm. won't take a hint I keep telling mm -hmm. him this and that and, and I said, you got to hit him over the head leave me alone <laughs> I, you know so. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've had any feedback in sort of in that direction where a woman that you worked with has has come back and said, you know, now I've got so much attention or and I can't, you know, it's like some some guys I can't turn it off, I can't send them away. Yeah. Does it backfire well, on anybody? I, I have had women say, you know, well, I don't want to smile at all men because then I'll I might get attention from the wrong man. Yeah. So. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think that most men can tell, though, if you're just smiling and being friendly or if you're actually, you know, wanting him to approach. Um, yeah, so I think it's, an, it's very I, confusing I for us. Very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what does what this really mean? <laughs> Huh? He said it's very confusing for us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gabby doesn't get smiled at very often. <laughs> but, I, you know, I think that's part of that is just in the uh, in the length of time that you smile, stuff like that, yeah, how much eye contact you make. I, I, know. I think that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yes, the longer you smile. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess uh, multiple smiles and eye contact. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, uh, uh, you you at an event and your eyes meet again and again, and there's a smile. Uh, That's every yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. That would imply. Now you're in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Even Gabby would pick up on that one. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> not allowed to pick up on anything. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I, yeah. so <laughs> a little bit more back on track. Um, what kind of um, so what, what kind of results have have people had that they've reported back to you, Morgan? That, that yeah. you know, what are the and obviously? And I've seen you post some some pictures like on Facebook and things, some before and after stuff, and and some of those women are amazingly different. Um, and you can see just from the, those photos, they feel different about themselves. The smile is completely different. In some cases, there was no smile in the before picture. So, what kind of you know what kind of feedback are you getting? Uh, well, that they are definitely getting more attention from not just men but from women. Uh, mm -hmm. That um, because they're more in their essence, that they're working at being more in their essence and dressing more in their essence in their correct colors, and so they actually are getting more respect. Uh, mm -hmm. from both men and women, more attention. They listen to them more um, keenly. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely, they're, they definitely get instant results, yeah. immediate results for after working with me. Yeah. Any, anybody have a testimonial that really stands out for you? or? Well, uh, some of my best girlfriends that I've known since I started this process, um, I would say almost all of them have either gotten married or in, <laughs> are in a relationship. Wow. Whereas before they were single and because, you know, they were with me through the whole process and I would teach them the things that I was learning all along and I would help them with their wardrobes, go through their closets, do their colors. And yep, they're all, either married or in mm -hmm. long-term relationships now. Yeah. So that's a pretty good question. Maybe you start hanging, hanging a different shingle out. It's like marriage, <laughs> not marriage counselor, but, you know, <laughs> Cupid, uh, yeah. something like staging a house to sell, you know, you're just staging it, a woman. That's a good analogy. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, I like that yeah. trellis and uh, wine um, story. That you, uh, oh, the trellis and the vine. I almost visualized it, you know, and I was like, oh my well, God. Well, now you have to share it, but one of you has to tell the story. Oh, What's really? that? One of you has to tell that story because the, the, the listeners aren't going to. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Morgan, with you, it's, it's a beautiful story. You began with that. Um, oh, gosh, I don't have my book right here. Oh, otherwise, I'll read on. it. I'll do get, you, do I'll you have the book? Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should have prepared it then if I asked that. Um, but it was just, it's an allegory, uh, of the trellis and the wine. Um, uh, they demonstrate pure masculinity and pure femininity, right? Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, here you go. Should I just read that? I guess I'll just read that quickly, Go right? for it. Yeah, the yeah. trellis and the vine. Yeah. Yeah. An allegory to illustrate masculinity and femininity. Um, an old wooden trellis stood in a lovely but neglected garden. The strong, sturdy trellis felt sad and alone because he had not been in use for many years. No flowers or vines adorned um, his old weathered frame. Thinking he had little purpose, he often wondered why he even existed. 
one day a new gardener was hired. After seeing the barren trellis, the gardener carried over a lovely vine and asked the trellis if he could, he would kindly supply the structure and direction needed for the vine to thrive. The trellis eagerly accepted the offer, delighted to at last have a beautiful vine to care for and support. Besides feeling purposeful, he also felt thrilled to be adorned with such beauty and softness, caressing his framework. What words? <laughs> um, he longed to protect her so that uh, she could flour flourish and um, shine in her radiant glory. Over time, and with the trellis' support, the vine grew more lush, confident, and beautiful by the day. She played freely and happily because she felt safe and secure in the trellis' arms. She knew she could depend on his stability and strength. She loved entwining uh, her bright leaves throughout his um, willing frame, willing frame. <laughs> he, enjoyed, <laughs> he enjoyed feeling useful by supporting her and he delighted in watching her play and grow. The two united into a perfect visual delight that people often stop to admire. Soon, couples asked to say their wedding vows be beneath the beautiful shade of the uh, trellis and the vine. Before long, several wedding celebrations happened under their united beauty every week, yet none of the wedded couples stopped to think about what created, oh, excuse me, oh, somebody is, okay, looking for me, uh, uh, apologies for that. Before long, several wedding celebrations happened under their united beauty every week, yet none of the uh, wedded couples stopped to think about what uh, created such beauty. Without the vine, the trellis would have appeared boring, drab, and lifeless. Without the supportive trellis, the wine's radiant beauty could not have been nurtured and showcased. Morgan Wanderley. Thank you for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So now you're a gardener too. <laughs> All we've been. All we've been. <laughs> no, not you, her. <laughs> oh, well, I did the trellis, I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're the trellis. <laughs> she's, she's bringing the, yeah. She's bringing the vines. Right. And you are the gardener, exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I really do enjoy the book. I, I still have uh, quite a bit to go, but I'm really enjoying it. Oh, good. I recommend it. I'm so happy you're reading it. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I find that half of my readers are men. Oh, my God. Which really I signed surprised up for, me. I signed up for your free gifts. Do you know that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're one of those people. Okay. Yeah. No, oh, I, oh, I'm like, uh, well, I guess it's just starting, right? Is, is, how new is this thing? Huh. Oh, I've been doing... Um, no, the book, I mean, it was published recently, right? Oh, it was published mm -hmm. uh, at the end of January last year. So, I mean, oh, this year. Very so recent, it's yeah. it's not even quite a year old yet. Yeah, yeah, it's very new. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah they're going to enjoy it. No, I, I signed up on behalf of my wife, so I'm going to give Oh, oh good. Yeah. Oh, good, good. I, I want to comment on that, you know, the idea that 50% of your readers are men mm -hmm. is a real accomplishment. For a couple of reasons, one one being the title of the book, simply feminine. Um, uh -huh. You know, there's a lot of a lot of those masculine men out there are, are not going to want to be caught <laughs> carrying that around. Uh -huh. um, but also because men are not the readers anymore. I don't think you know mm. most readership out there is is <laughs> at least starts with the the woman in the household, uh -huh. you know, and then she goes, "Oh, you got to read this." But um, yeah, so I, kudos to you. I think that that speaks a lot towards um, you know, the quality of the book. Yes, and it also speaks to women that this is how accurate the book is because mm -hmm. men are reading it and endorsing it all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I get so many uh, emails from men saying, you know, how much they love the book. Next, including, and then John Gray called me. Oh, I got uh, it. About three weeks ago, he called me personally to tell me that how much he'd enjoyed reading the book and it mm -hmm. was a wonderful contribution to the world and that all women need to read this book. So awesome. Yeah. I was yeah. on cloud nine about that. Tell them, tell them to put that in writing. Happy, happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Yeah. So ne uh, next edition, illustrated version with beautiful. <laughs> Colorful feminine illustrations. Oh, 
That's and a very good idea. A gift edition. for the ebook. A souvenir, <laughs> a souvenir edition. You know, a coffee. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could do a coffee table version. Can you do this? Ooh, yeah, I sure. Like yeah. yeah, sell it for a hundred bucks, and you know, yeah, because uh, color printing color books is not cheap. So, I know. So they, they cost funny. a lot, but um, yeah, 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 coffee table uh, edition. It's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Thank you. Yeah, for that. yeah. I, I I have an example of such a book. I have one book like that. It's poetry by Amar Hayam, who is um. Uh, very romantic. He wrote a lot of poetry about wine and women and whatever. And he had amazing miniatures, you know, very fine illustrations there. Uh, oh, wow. Beautiful, beautiful, very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, this is a great candidate. You could definitely, although, you know what, the whole like uh, workshop thing and the things, you know, the tasks that you are providing at the end of each chapter, right? Mm -hmm. That obviously would not be anything that the coffee. Uh, uh, you know, coffee oh, right. yeah, pads, would, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, mean, it could be yeah. it could be like a lighter edition without uh, the guy. Sure, guide, I could just pick out the highlights. Exactly, the exactly. You know, yeah. like there's one like Wisdom of Your Thoughts or something. There's a beautiful book like that too. Oh, uh -huh. uh, they also, I think, they did this coffee book uh, edition. Yeah, wonderful. Oh. It's only the beginning. <laughs> it's only the beginning. Yeah, you Morgan, meet agent. your new agent. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, I come up with a lot of ideas, but I rarely see them through. You know? <laughs> All right. Um, I think we're pretty good here. Unless, uh, Gabby, have any, any additional questions you wanted to... To oh, I have plenty of questions. Uh, many of them I had to dismiss because they seem ridiculous. <laughs> uh, you'd be doing a lot of cutting after. <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's a very interesting topic, you know. Um, um, I guess my interest was predominantly around, um, you know, how did we get so confused? Uh, with this, I mean, what you know? How, how, why do so many women develop so much masculine energy? Even even if it's not, it, there is an it's in conflict with their natural inherent feminine energy. Right? It is. It, it has yeah. to start from childhood. There is something that we are not like as parents. You know, what are we? Are we like teaching our feminine girls? You have, you know, toughen up. You know, this is a tough world. Whatever, right? There's so many. Uh, yeah. Morgan, go ahead, because I got I got lots of opinions on that. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it's <clears throat> propaganda mm -hmm. uh, in the media and that sort of thing. Too. I mean, I've mm -hmm. heard different things. Like, you know, at one time, um, they wanted to have double taxation. So yeah. one way to do that was to get women in the workforce, and they mm -hmm. had to talk them into it by saying, you know, men are men are not treating you well, you need to get out and have your own life. And, <laughs> um, you know, they made it like men were just, mm -hmm. you know, living this great life of Riley and, you know, women needed to partake in that too. It's so much fun so, down in the mines. What's that? It's so much fun yeah. down in the mines. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Chipping away at the coal. Exactly. I mean, yeah. you know, men were re really trying to protect their women from having to do those kinds of things. And now women... Mm -hmm. All over doing those kinds of things, so yeah. and that's why so many women aren't happy because they're they're not doing their first passion, which is mm -hmm. relationships, raising children, caring for a home. Well, a lot of it's you know, it, well, like I said, there's so many factors: the, the the feminist movement, all of the you know, there's been shame on women who wanted to be stay-at-home moms. Absolutely, um, there's well, been that's not, you know, they talk about women's liberation. Yeah, well, uh, true liberation says you can do whatever you want yeah. or whatever you choose. But exactly. if you're being forced into the workplace, yeah. that isn't liberation. That's right. more like that's yeah. more like slavery. Yeah, losing the freedom. And then the, the the judicial system, you know, we can sue somebody for you know it's it's like you you go you got in some corporations it's a, a guaranteed trip to the the uh, HR office. If you compliment a woman on, on her, uh, her new shoes, you know, oh, oh, those are nice shoes. 
Oh, oh sexual harassment. Great. You know, you can't even say hello anymore, hardly. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's so that's great. and and when yeah. that happens, and people stop, you know, the 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 that masculine energy gets pulled yeah. back. It's that's got right. to be filled. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Nature is somebody's got to fill it, and and if the men aren't doing it, then guess who's that's left? Step forward. Yeah. So that's a piece of it too. There's all oh, there's a hundred different. Piece oh, yeah, it's a very puzzle. deep topic. Morgan, in, in your book, uh, I think you have a wonderful uh, piece, uh, you know, chapter on that. Why do we, why do men, why do they stay quiet? Oh, yeah. I remember you were saying that. Why, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you really feel that way, why didn't you speak up, right? And uh, yeah. That was, yeah, that was all about being, you know, and it was almost like, like desperate, like men didn't want to, lose the connection right because it was right great. they they don't want to be seen as sexist or exactly. they don't want to lose the relationship lose the relationship they have a fear of well they're going to lose their wife or girlfriend or right and it was very risky i mean you could easily be uh, labeled as a sexist uh, in our world you know and especially like mm -hmm. in this litigious society i mean yeah you know, oh yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and we're, we're seeing right yeah. now we're seeing more and more of uh, men being accused of improper uh, you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You what's the word that? I want here? You know, acting improperly towards women. And yeah. I just saw something. Garrison Keillor from oh. NPR is uh -huh. being accused now. I, I think it's going to oh, be okay. it's going to be so common now that mm -hmm. you're going to be is like, oh yeah, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. It's not going to have any value anymore. In a few months, it's nobody's going to oh, take it, it seriously is. anymore. Morgan, what's your take on this, on the whole scandal with... Uh, I, you know, I don't really know. I think a lot of these mm -hmm. men, in, like in Hollywood and in government, I think they, a lot of them are um, guilty. Mm -hmm. um, but then it also opens the door for a lot of innocent men to be mm -hmm. blamed also. And I do think that most men are, you know, good men. I really do believe that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, in higher-up positions... Um, a lot of these men gain a lot of power and they feel like they can do whatever they want. And I think it attracts, these positions attract that type of man also. Mm -hmm. They tend to be more narcissistic and yeah. um, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, equally you might want to address masculinity in the same way that you're addressing femininity. Because, I mean, if you think of it, like men, masculine men, right, abuse their masculinity, disrespecting uh, women in this way, you know, what we are seeing now, right? Um, you know, so I'm, I'm saying that's, a, that's another topic, interesting topic. Too. Yeah, and I don't think it's masculine yeah. men that abuse uh -huh. women. I think it's, it's insecure men insecure who abuse men. women. Uh -huh. Men who, you know, think maybe they don't believe they're masculine enough, so they're trying to prove it. Mm -hmm. it's, it really boils down to insecurity. Yeah, I agree. Uh, insecure yeah, I agree. men. So I tell women to avoid insecure mm -hmm. men. Um, mm -hmm. Because a secure man uh, doesn't need to prove anything. He's just kind of naturally masculine. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a, a misnomer. Yeah. I think that a lot point. of people point. believe. And that's why masculinity is so demonized and shunned because they think it's evil but it's it's not evil it's it's something we need yeah yep no, that's an all right point. Yeah. well morgan um i think we're going to wrap up so um if people want to get more of you and and more of uh, your book and anything else what where can they find you how can they how can they best reach you um, well, the book is on Amazon, Simply Feminine, Surprising Insights from Men. Uh, the website is uh, simplyfemininebook.com. And for my makeovers, it's simplyfemininemakeover.com. Cool. And also check out morganwonderly.com. I really enjoyed that. Yes, the, and I also have morganwonderly.com. <laughs> Don't hold back on us. Give it a, give us everything you got. <laughs> so, okay, great. Well, thank you again for coming. I'm glad we finally got this down. Thank you and so much. got all the pieces together at the same time. Thank you so this was much. Fun. It was fun. Um, yeah, looking forward to hanging out again sometime. And uh, thank everybody out there for joining us. Hopefully uh, you picked up a little something interesting here. 
and uh, get hold of Morgan if you have any interest in what she's doing and check out her book. It's definitely a fun read. So, all <laughs> Thank right. Thank you so we'll much, Tim. Thank you. And Gabby. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. Hi, this is Tim Starr. Thanks for joining me and Gabi on the, the universe between your ears. We really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us for a little while. And we'd like to see you again. So be sure to subscribe wherever it is you're consuming the podcast from, whether it's YouTube or Stitcher or iTunes or whatever the hell else is out there. We want to see you again. We also want to hear from you. So let us know what you think of each episode. Let us know if you've got an idea for a future episode that you think would be just killer. Absolutely. Let us know. All right. Thanks again, and we will see you next time around. Bye-bye.